Hi there everyone, welcome back to the archives at the Royal Society. I'm here with head librarian Keith Moore. There are lots of pictures of plants at the Royal Society. I'm holding one here. I'm sure you've seen plenty in our previous videos. Keith loves pictures of plants, don't you? This is a great one. This is uh, from South Africa. It's what we call a red hot poker. It's from a series of aloes and uh, grown at uh, Chelsea Physic Garden. So really a fantastic thing. So if you ever want to see pictures of plants, come to the Royal Society, ask for Keith. But I wanted to see some real plants. Mm. And you've kind of delivered the goods. Well, that's right. So most of the Society's early uh, plant collections were transferred to other museums. But just every now and again, there's a survivor in the archives and we can have a look at a couple of them. So there, there are plant collections, real plants. So this is an 18th century uh, manuscript. And when we were upstairs, apparently this was marked as from an anonymous source. That's right, but as soon as we started looking at it, it was pretty obvious actually that it had an author, uh, that it had a location, so we can change the catalogue entry to express it uh, rather better than at the moment. So this is in just plain brown wrappers, and you can see there's a covering note and paper associated with the plants that have been collected. Oh, Ooh, a bit of a drawing there nice, too. Nice, no, we've good. got a picture. Yeah, we like a drawing. Here's the end of the letter from the anonymous person who isn't anonymous, they just have a very difficult to read signature. Oh, but it's actually wearing. And the house it's been sent or village it's been sent from is Leeswood. And the date is 1776. And as we know, that's a big date, Brady. That is exactly 200 years before I was born. Very good, yes. Yeah. Right. And it's written to Danes Barrington, a very important uh, fellow of the Royal Society. So he sent in his paper, but instead of an illustration, he sent in the real plants. This is a set of ferns from the north of England, presumably collected in late 1775 or early 1776. So I think those are very evocative things, the fact that he is a living specimen that was collected so long ago. Yeah, I like to think of like that frond just sitting out in the wild somewhere thinking, oh, I'm just a plant doing my thing, yeah. not knowing they were about to be plucked out, put between a couple of bits of paper, sent to the Royal Society and 200 years later still be looked at. Plant immortality. Yeah. yeah. People like Joseph Banks when they went off on expeditions around the world would do exactly this and preserve new specimens of plants that they found along the way. It's still got that little bit of green there and there's a little slip of paper in there as well which has got I think another plant specimen just lodged within it. Oh there we go. There we go. Some little... So it's a tiny little fern by the look of it. Oh that's a nice one. Lovely. Mm. That's in great condition as well. You can see what's happening here. He's recording the name of the plant, what he thinks the name of the plant was. And here we have the reference to his paper and then the plant itself. That one's looking good. I think because these things really haven't been looked at, it's helped to preserve them. Mm. So actually, a bit of tragically poor cataloguing is sometimes quite useful. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Well, there's hope for you yet. Well, yeah, there is, yeah. <laughs> Got to keep me in a job somehow. Yeah. And another mm. tiny little one, what does it say? Salix folio lorio angustiori. So a Latin description of what this particular plant is. And it's actually quite a nice leaf specimen. Oh yeah. Who said you can't make YouTube videos about dead leaves? Who did say that? I don't know, I think <laughs> I just did. But we have a second collection here, which I think is, believe it or not, even more interesting because of the way this came into the collection. Well, the collection this comes from is from Howard Florey's papers. So Florey is a great pioneer of penicillin after Alexander Fleming discovers the antibiotic effects of penicillin. Florey's team at the William Dunn School of Pathology in Oxford make it into a treatment that you can administer to patients. So Florey shared the Nobel Prize mm, with yeah, Fleming and, big figure. and yeah. another chap as well. Yeah, and Florey became president of the Royal Society. Now, his collected papers don't just have his own material in it, but lots of his associates and particularly the papers of his wife. Now, of course, these days we're really interested in papers of by women scientists, and these have been rather sheltered within the, the umbrella of Howard Florey, but this is M. Ethel Florey. You left out a very important fact about Howard Florey. Adelaide, from Adelaide. There we go. 
as was his wife, I believe. But this is a collection that his wife put together when she was a schoolgirl. Well, right, she trained in medicine. So she had her own career and this is the beginning of it. So this is a school record. So you can see here there's a botany notebook. She's Ethel Reed at this point as well. So okay. you can see it's been endorsed by the teacher in uh, 1916. Okay, we have some drawings. So this is her, her botany notes with illustrations. This is probably classwork. And then here we are. Stuck on, we get records of presumably domestic garden plants, but also wild Australian plants as well. And you'll have a, an encyclopedic knowledge of these, Brady, won't you? Part of me is really excited because obviously these plants were collected in Adelaide, where I'm from, all yep. these years ago. Another part of me is feeling a bit sheepish because I don't know anything about plants <laughs> and you will still know more about them than me. So. Well, here's a garden plant. You see here's Lily of the Valley. You can see it's just in the margin there. So this is just a little thing she collected as a schoolgirl. Isn't it funny? She was doing this as a schoolgirl and through a series of coincidences and life and happenstances ended up in the Royal Society yeah, Science I just, Archives. I sincerely hope that my school records don't survive that long anyway. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Maybe it's come off that page. but I, I think it has. Yeah, and this yeah. is a, a completely different plant as well. But it's a rather beautiful thing. But clearly this is strayed from somewhere else in the volume, I think. Oh, look. Lemon and orange. Yeah, so she's uh, collecting all kinds of things. I want to find some eucalyptus, like a gum tree. Can you see in the margin, the seeds from the seed heads have, have fallen out and uh, you kind of wonder, could you get them going? <laughs> Thistle. <laughs> That's quite artistically presented yeah, there. It's got a bit of leaf miner there by the look of it. What's that? Insect. Right. It's nice how she's interspersing her own drawings of what's going on in the plant here. It is nice. And also we can see here the teachers put the marks there. How did she do? Five out of five. Five out of five? five well, out I think of five. these are pretty good, actually. I don't know what that's doing at the back, but that doesn't look very uh, yeah, well, botanical to me. That looks like a pel he pelvis, doesn't it? Does, it? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Eucalyptus tree. Yeah. Gum tree. There we go. Mm. Happy Brady. It's going to have a patriotic moment for Australia. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Makes me think of home. Who would have thought I would find an Adelaide eucalyptus tree leaf at the Royal Society Archive in London? That's pretty good. <laughs> We're into some animal ones here. So again, it's, it looks like a walking pony. Oh, look at that one. A oh, horse and carriage, that's nice. I wonder if you can get the spinning wheel effect. Oh yeah, we'll give that one a try. I like that. He's filming from different positions here. So not just the, the kind of classic way a horse progresses, but how it moves from behind. <laughs> pig? Racing pig. Racing pig. 